Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, let's thank and pray unto our God, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, who has been giving us mercy and blessing, so we can meet here virtually, Zoom meeting, without any trouble and obstacles. Secondly, may peace and salutation I was given to our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who has guided us from darkness to the lightness. So, thank you very much again to our speakers today. Yeah, we have already have two speakers uh, this morning, Mr. Bakari from the Gambia and then uh, we have the second speaker Mr. Hussein Gibril from Sudan. Uh, each of the speaker will talk about the introduction experience in Indonesia and in the each country I think and the most important thing for the student you have to practice uh, because our uh, motto for today is practice makes perfect. So uh, I invite you, uh, our students, to express your mind while you're questioning, while you're asking anything or responding or anything. So it is your time to practice more about uh, your uh, skill in English exactly. Okay, uh, without further ado, uh, please welcome to the first speaker, I think. Yes. My bro Bakari, go ahead for the first speaker to speak. Okay, time is yours. Yeah. I hope you guys can hear me well, right? Yes. Uh, sorry, there was a loud noise here of the generator, so I hope so it's okay now. Okay. Um, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I hope so. We are all living healthy and then happy to attend this online platform. I will first give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who have given me the great pleasure and honor to come and speak to you about this um, um, topic that we have highlighted. I will also give thanks to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who have taken us from darkness to lightness. Without him, we will have been in a state of loss. First of all, my presentation is in a threefold. First, I'm going to do the introduction. Second, to the, um, my experience while staying in Indonesia. And then finally, about cross-cultural understanding. And then in the last part of the slide, I have a short video about um, the traditional dance of Gambia. I hope so, we are going to love the dance. Okay. We begin by introduction. My name is Bakari Ture. I'm a native speaker from Gambia. Um, doing a bachelor degree, which is called S2 in Indonesian language um, in the University of Muhammadiyah, Yogyakarta, one of the best private, uh, universities in India. Um, from there, I'll move straight to the second part of the presentation, which is my experience while in Indonesia. As you can see, some of the topics that I highlight, culture, dress code, language, food, and then tradition. Although this country, which is called Indonesia, is a very peaceful country and is um, a well-known country for its peace. The first experience that I have is about the culture. When I came to Indonesia, although we have some cultural difference from Gambia, like Indonesia and Gambia, we have some cultural differences. Um, when I came here, the first experience about the culture of this country is um, 
greeting. Indonesian greet each other by shaking hand and then to say assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to one another when we meet as an Indonesian. And then after saying assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, sometimes they went for the shake hand to each other. And then sometimes they like kiss the hand of the person that they are shaking hand, which is something that was different to me, uh, which, which was something that is new to me. When I came here, um, I met some group of young people. When I shake hand with them, they try to kiss my hand. I was like, oh, this is something new to me. I was like confused. But as time goes on, I get <laughs> to use the ring. So when I meet some people, when we greet, but some of them will kiss um, the finger. But it was something that was new to me. I didn't expect that. So in Gambia, we don't kiss each other's hand. So I know it is a culture here, and then I respect that culture. And then the other side of it is when you come to a particular house, when you are invited to someone's house, you don't come inside the house with a shoes you place your shoes outside like you put your sandal outside and all that outside. so you don't come to the house with a shoes so it it is something that is also common in gambia when you are invited to a particular place or into, into a particular house you don't come inside that house with a shoes or sandal you leave your sandal or whatever shoes you are wearing so it is something that is also similar to that of the Gambia. And then the, the other side of the um, point that I want to talk about is dress code. This is something that I think every country has their dress code. And then um, I think most of the country's dress code are different. Like, before I attend the Zoom meeting, they were telling me like, yes, I should not attend the Zoom meeting with a T-shirt. This is something that is a culture. When you are invited here in Indonesia on an, a, a, a respected occasion, you don't wear just a mere T-shirt, okay? So, and then also in, in the universities here, when going to school, you don't put on T-shirt. It is a culture. And then in Gambia, we don't have something like that. But in, in school or in universities, we have a special uniform that you wear when going to school. It's not like you have to wear a t-shirt or anything. There is a special uniform that is created for every student to wear when going to school. So that is not something that I um, find difficult to cope with. And then Indonesia also, when I came here, they have a traditional cloth which is called bat, which I love very, very well. Batik is something that I really like for its fashion and for its way of its design. So when I came here, um, the first place that I was in Malan City, they told me like, Mas Bakari, do you try wearing batik? I said, no, I don't know what batik is. So the following day, they take me to the mall where they have different design of party. And then I was asked to choose the type or the color that I like. So I look at the batiks, they were all amazingly traditionally um, decorated. So I was so happy. And then I was able to choose one among the batik. And then um, for the fact that I love the batik a lot, I love it a lot. And then in most of the time um, where I was in Malan City, every Friday, I used to wear batik when going to the mosque. So I really like the batik. And then the other one, which I really find difficult to wear among the traditional clothes is, I don't know whether I call sarong or what. So this is a, a male type. In Gambia, we as female, uh, I, I, we as males don't tie wrapper. We as males don't tie wrapper. It's only females that tie wrapper. So I was like, when I come here, I saw people like males tied in wrapper, which is called sarong. I find it difficult. 
even still now I can because I think this is a, um, something that is a challenge on me. Since Gambia, I was not used to it. And then I know some people will forgive me for that. And then for the fact that I'm not just used to it. But I think with time, I will be able to get used to that. The other one is language. Language is something that I really find very, very interesting. Then when I newly came here, I cannot speak Bahasa Indonesia. I go to the marketplace to buy food. I find it difficult to buy uh, food because I cannot speak their language. I cannot speak Indonesian language. So when I go there, the, the, the first thing that I used to do is to use Google Translate to translate what I want to say. And then they will look at it and then solve my problem. So, but I see that this is not the solution. So I have to try to speak Indonesian language. So from there, I started having some Indonesian friends and then I move it and I speak with those people using the Indonesian language. So language is something that I really find it difficult. Within three months, I was able to speak um, some little Bahasa Indonesia. So I can present myself Bahasa Indonesia like uh, Nama Saya Bakari to Saya Bresal Dari Gambia, something like that. And then I was able to communicate as time goes on. The fourth part of it is food. When I came to Indonesia, food was something that is totally a great experience for me. Um, in Indonesia, the food here and then in Gambia is different. So the food here, um, some of the food are so spicy. For me, I cannot eat spicy food. <laughs> spicy food, spicy is something that I really find it difficult to eat. I, even in Gambia, I don't eat spicy. And for the fact that in Gambia, we don't um, like to eat spicy food. Spicy was something that I really find it difficult. And most of the food in Indonesia here is spicy. And then as a foreigner who came here as a student newly for the first time, I think uh, it's going to be difficult looking at the food that the Indonesian have. They are very delicious and they are so nice. But before I could be used to it, I find it difficult. My first two, three days, I realized I couldn't eat anything. My first three days in Indonesia, I could not eat any food. I was just... Drink, so I drink soda and then some juice and then some fruits. That's all. But as time goes on, I was able to eat. I got used to it. I was able to adapt myself to what the food like nasi goreng, nasi padang, bakso and soto. I cannot eat still now. Bakso <laughs> and soto, I still cannot eat. But the other foods I try like nasi goreng, um, so uh, sade. And then some of the seafood I can eat. But soto and bakso was still a problem for me. So it is a great experience for me. And then the other part is like um, traditional place. When I came here, I visited a lot of traditional places. I, when I was in East Java, I visited um, Batu, Alun Alun Batu. I visited a lot of traditional places that I was able to explore and see a lot of traditional places. And then still now, I'm in Yogyakarta now. I wanted, if this pandemic is over, I would like to visit a lot of traditional places to know and then explore before I go back to my inshallah. Inshallah. The other second, uh, the, the, the third part of the presentation will be cross-cultural understanding. This is the last part of my presentation. Um, we realize Gambia and Indonesia are two different countries. Yeah. And then have some cultures in Gambia which are not in Indonesia. We have some cultures in Indonesia which are not in Gambia. Yeah. So um, as a foreign student for me, I was able to spot out some of the different cultures that the Gambia have and then that is not in Indonesia. First of all, I would like to show you the map of Gambia. So most of you will know where Gambia is exactly. And then if you see the Gambia map, you will get to know exactly this is the map of Gambia. This is the map where Bakari Ture come from. <laughs> so I know some of you don't even know no. or have never heard about the country's name Gambia. But um, as I'm explaining to you right now, you will be able to see the map of Gambia and then the flag of Gambia. 
the, and in each flag, um, the Gambia flag has three or four colors, and each colors have its special meaning. So I'm going to tell you all the meaning of the flag's color. Okay, this is the map of Gambia. Gambia map is just like this, and then um, Gambia is situated in West Africa. So if you ask where is Gambia, you can know that Gambia is located in West Africa. Okay, and then our neighboring borders of or the country that we are bordered with or the country that we are close to is called Senegal. As you can see in the map here, you can see Senegal here. Senegal in the other side of the uh, map and Senegal in the other side of the map. That means Gambia is inside Senegal. So Senegal surround Gambia. So we are inside Senegal. It's a very small country having a population of 2 million people. So it is a very small country. So you cannot compare the population of Gambia to Indonesia, which is having a 270 plus million um, people. In Gambia, we have 2 million people living in it. So it's a very small country. And then the country is also divided by river, water. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the water flows from the Atlantic Ocean to the other side of the country. So Gambia is divided by river. We have two parts like um, the west and the south, so it's divided by it. So this other one is the flag of Gambia. We have red, white, blue, white, green. I understand. So the meaning of this red Gambian flag stands for the sun. The sun that we have, like this sun. That is the meaning of this red. You understand? The white in this flag here represents peace. The white in this Gambia flag represents peace. And then the blue in the flag represents river. Because Gambia have a lot of rivers. Have a lot of rivers. So the blue in this flag represent river. And then this white here represent peace. Okay? And then the green in this flag represent agriculture. The green in Gambia flag represent agriculture because most of the Gambian people are farmers. And then they grow crop during rainy season. And during rainy season, you know that every, everywhere used to be green because the grass used to come out and then every um, part of the environment to be green. That's why the green in this Gambia flag is representing agriculture. Okay? So we move to the culture, the culture of Gambia. We know food is a culture. We know the dress code is a culture. We know how you dance, it is a culture. So this is the, you can see in the picture, we have like the food, the food of Gambia. This is called Benekin. This is one of the most favorite food in Gambia. And it, um, when we have occasion, like we have marriage ceremony, we have um, occasion in the universities, or we have programs, they usually cook this food, which is called Benekin, because it is the traditional food of the Gambia. If you can search in Google, you can see the traditional food of Gambia is called Benekin. This is prepared with um, rice, um, like it is prepared in the form of nasi goreng, but it is not exactly nasi goreng. Um, the rice is prepared in the form of nasi goreng because you cook it with oil and other um, ingredients. And then you have fish, you have cabbage, and then you have other ingredients that are added to it. But they are cooked separately, like the fish, the, the, the garden egg, the other part of the greatly one of the food that is um, served in Gambia. A wife in Gambia is like if you marry a wife, this is how they dress groups in Gambia. It's called Bambara. I come from um, this is the way we present our wife or this is the way our marriage ceremony is done. Okay, the wife prepare in this way. The, the other part, the, the other, the, the, the one beside the wife is the mother or the sister who accompany the wife to the husband. You understand? So um, the wife and the mom are just standing beside each other, dressed in a traditional clothes. And then the other picture is a masquerade. This is called a masquerade in Gambia. And then um, 
this masquerade usually performed in occasion like um, circumcision ceremony and then in marriage ceremony, um, New Year days, and then other traditional festivals that are organized. So this masquerade performed there. And then in the, in, the, in the last part of the video, you will see this masquerade dancing. You will see the way this masquerade dance in the last, last part of the presentation. So this is our traditional um, celebration that we do. If we are celebrating, this is how um, we organize and this is how um, we dress our masquerade. And then for them to perform, for people or to entertain people. So it is very lively. I hope so. Sometime you will go to YouTube to find some of the videos relating to this traditional masquerade in Gambia. It is very, very live. The, the, the last part of my presentation will be a video about how um, that masquerade that I show you in the other part of the presentation, how they dance. Okay. This is called the traditional um, cultural dance of Gambia. Let's take a look of it. Okay, um, this brings us to the end of the presentation, and then this is the traditional dance of the masquerade that I have shown you in the other part of the presentation. So this is the way our masquerade dance in a cultural event or in a traditional event or in an event that is organized to bring or to entertain people. So this brings to the end of the presentation, and then the other part of the presentation, I would like to ask but after my friend Hussein have did the presentation, I would also like to ask some of the students about some of the questions relating to the present, uh, presentation. So I think um, if you follow my presentation, you will be able to answer some of the questions that I have um, regarding the presentation. And then I would also like to hear some of the questions from the student as well to see if they are following the presentation accordingly. So this brings me to the end of the presentation and I thank you all for your kindly attention. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Bakari, wow. amazing presentation, I think, yeah? Yeah, it's gonna be 20 minutes past, yeah? It's sharp, I think. Thank you very much again, Mr. Bakari, yeah? Okay, good. So the next speaker coming from Sudan. 
Mr. Hussein. Please, time is yours, Mr. Hussein. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi ashrah li sadri, wasir li amri, wahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. First of all, let us praise to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of his blessing, we are able to attend this platform today. And also my peace be upon Muhammad, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our messenger and the last messenger from the God or from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I take this opportunity also to thank the committee who give us this golden opportunity to talk to the student directly. We wish that this platform is going to be nice and also it's going to be beneficial for you all. Uh, first of all, my name is uh, Hussein Jibril Musa Saleh. This is my full name, actually. Uh, but you can, because in Sudan, we have our names, it has four words. The first one is my name, Hussein. Jibril is my father. Musa is my grandfather, and Saleh is my grand grandfather. So in Sudan, my actually my name is just Hussein. So you can call me Hussein. I did my bachelor degree in University of Khartoum in Sudan. My master in University, and now I am doing PhD. Universitas Muhammad uh, Yogyakarta. Uh, first, I maybe I uh, this is all what's about me. Second, I go directly to the cultural experiences that I faced in Indonesia since 2000, 2015 until now. Yeah. Uh, regarding the food, as my brother Bakari said, we as international students. We, we come from different cultures. And to shift from environment to the new environment is not something easier. Me as a Sudanese, I shift from Sudan. I have different food compared with Indonesian because in Sudan we eat bread. Later you will see it in the slide. We are eating bread and also we are eating camel meat. Uh, the food we cook it, it's similar with Padang food here also in Indonesia, but we eat it with bread. And also our food is not spicy like Indonesian food. Uh, our language, we speak Arabic actually. We speak Arabic. So why that, you know, regarding the food, my experience is when I come first time in Indonesia, every time I feel a stomach ache when I eat Padang food and also nasi goreng. I was sick every time I was sick. I go, I go to clinic, I come from clinic. I go to the clinic and then I come. <laughs> it was really tough experiences here. Yeah. Uh, regarding language, we are speaking Arabic in Sudan and the English. So we have two official languages, English and Arabic. Uh, when, as we know that most of Indonesian people they still cannot speak English language. So when I come to Indonesia, I go to the market, I just use non-verbal communication in the market, book. Like just, you know, <laughs> I just use my hand, you know, non-verbal communication because I cannot, if I talk to her English, she will not understand me. If I talk, if she talk to me in Bahasa, I will not understand her. So just I use my hand, I want this this and then i give you you know because it's difficult also for me to count the indonesian uh, currency i don't know the rupee which one is 20 rupee which one is 30 so every time i go to the market i bring 100 thousand rupee so she will give me my uh and that uh, i have it uh regarding the custom i mean or the indonesian clothes it's also different yeah Maybe I will explain deeply about this. Regarding environment in Sudan, actually we are from hot climate. The environment there it's so hot actually. 
uh, so why that we are a little bit black because we are black because we are come from, coming from the hot <laughs> weather yeah <laughs> so if our uh, if you guys went to sudan maybe you be like me yeah? <laughs> uh and uh, actually the the was i say also it's a little bit extreme yeah? when it's hot it's really hot when it's cold it's really cold it's so cold I hope one day you will go to Sudan. Maybe you can study your master or bachelor degree there. Inshallah. Uh, here directly, I ask you a question because I want you to talk, to talk with me, yeah, guys. So, which one is Sudan flux from this one? Who, who can answer this question? Which one is Sudan flux? Ayo, siapa anakku? Langsung di unmute. Suaranya pilih. One, two, three, four. Okay. Who will answer this question? Which one is Sudan? Number one. one. Number one. one. Number 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 one. Okay. Number one. You, are, you are a smart guy. Yeah? You, you, are, you already know. It. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is the first one is Sudan. It's all almost similar. Yeah? Sudan, Emirates, and also here we have Palestine. Which one is Palestine? Four. Okay. Number four. 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 Oh, yeah, right. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, what do you know about Sudan? Who can answer this question? What do you know about Sudan, guys? Admira. Admira, you can answer this question. Admira, welcome. What welcome do you know about Sudan? Anything? You say any word? Yeah, apa yang anda tahu tentang Sudan, Admira? Please, anything. Anything, no, yeah. I don't know. Yang anda tahu tentang Sudan? Mbak Mira. If hear, Admira, if you hear Sudan, what is come to your mind? Uh, for the first time. Uh, Africa. Okay, nice, Africa. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, who who next? What's come to your mind when you hear Sudan? Beautiful. Say anything. Say anything. It's you are freely to talk. Beautiful. Sorry, we are not hearing you. Well. What's come to your mind, guys, huh? when you hear Sudan? Okay. Who else? Who else? We, because you cannot hear her. You, Nadifa. you can talk, Nadifa. Yeah, what do you know about Sudan? Yeah, what? Sorry, um, what? Islam country. Okay, nice. Islamic country. country. Okay. Who else? Who? Oh, oh. Who? Country that near with eight feet. Near with? Eight feet. Eight feet. Yeah, mm, right. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Nice. Who else? Who more? The language are uh, maybe English and Arabic. Right, right. That's true. Thank you so much. Yeah, Arabic and English or language. Okay, who else? Who? Last one, last one, last one. Who? Located in the northeast of the African. Wow, this is nice question. You answered the second question. Nice. Okay. Where, which part of Africa is Sudan? It's already answered now. It's in, in north. Africa, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. As we see here in the map, Sudan is bordered by Egypt from the north. You see here, guys. And also from the north, west, Libya. And also Chad from the west. You see? And then Central Africa from the south, west, and also from the south, part it's uh, South Sudan which is different country also and also from the South is, is Ethiopia 
from the east is Eritrea. And also here, you guys see here, what is this, this is a blue one? This blue one, what is this? Who knows this? Yeah. What, what? Betul Jawa, betul Jawa, Jawa. Say again. Say, say again. This is the blue one between between Arab Saudi and Sudan, between Saudi Arabia and Sudan. What is the blue one? The blue line that you see it here. What what is this? Who can answer this question, guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Be brave, talk. Do not feel shy. We are here. All we are learning together. So please, do not feel shy. Say anything. No one will beat you if you are mistaken. So talk. <laughs> yeah. What is the blue one? The blue one you see here between Sudan and Saudi Arabia, between Mecca, Mecca and Sudan, between Mecca and Red Sudan. Out merah. Red sea. Let's see. Let's, see. Let's, see. Let's see. Do not say to me that you're already googling, yeah? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay, that's let's see, yeah. Right, yeah. Okay. Who knows this one? Who knows this one? This this river. Who knows this river? Neil. Okay, right. Okay. This is this is the river. This wow. is not river, and there's two 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 kind of uh, river Nile. What which one? This one is Blue Nile. This one, this is, is called Blue Nile, and this is White Nile. Mm -hmm. Both of them they meet in Khartoum. This is Khartoum actually. This is the capital city of Sudan, Khartoum. They meet in Khartoum and then go to the Egypt. This is one of the longest river in the world. You hear about it, yeah? Yeah, this is River Nile. Okay. This is Khartoum, as you see here. This is the capital city of Sudan. This is Sudanese food. Maybe you will like it. I think you will like it. <laughs> uh, as you see here, this is, this is we call it Gurasa and Dam'a. This is Dam'a, actually. The Dam'a is beef stuff loaded with tomato tomato and also green pepper and other ingredients. We, we, we make it from camel meat, you know, and also cow meat, yeah? This is, we call it dam'a, and this is bread here. Here we have asida, this is asida, Sudanese porch. This is asida, yeah? This is the Sudanese food, actually. It's not spicy. We eat, you know, in Sudan, we eat meat too much. Every time we eat meat. So why that we are expressive, we are expressive people, you know? When we are hungry, you will see like this. When we are happy, we smile directly. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if you went to Sudan, when you see people like hungry, so do not shock, yeah? That's our expression, yeah? If he is angry, you will see it in his face directly. Because the weather is hot, we eat meat. So the high cholesterol with the hot weather is make us wow. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Kisra, yeah? We have Kisra, we have Shea. Shea is, it means that the, the camel meat, yeah? Here you see it, yeah? Mm. This, this food is delicious here, you guys. So you have to visit Sudan. In Sudan, we don't use a spoon when we eat. We use our hand. So we eat by hand, yeah? Okay, who knows this? Which country? And what do you know about this? In which country is this? Pyramid. Okay, in which country? Egypt. Okay, Admira said who else? Who else? In which country? Sudan. Sudan. Rahma said Sudan. Okay, who else? Okay, right. This is in Sudan, actually. This pyramid's in Sudan, actually. 
In Sudan, we have 200 primates, which is more than Egypt. Wow. Yeah, wow. we have 200. So you have to visit Sudan. This is promotion for you guys, yeah? We have many tourism destinations, and we have Jabal Marra, we have the Red Sea, we have Kasala. All this place is so nice, so beautiful, wonderful. So you have to visit it, yeah? Inshallah. Yeah. This is our national Sudanese dress, yeah? Mm. We wear like this. If you see here, this is me actually. If you see here, you say that this is Ustaz, but I'm not Ustaz. This is our national custom, you know. This is our national dress, yeah. In Sudan, every time we wear like this, we wear like this, daily life, yeah. And the woman also wear like this. It looks like India, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's called it top. For women, it's called it top, yeah. They wear like this. Actually, this is my mom, actually. I bring her picture to be sample, yeah. <laughs> this is my mom. Hmm. Okay, we wear like this every time in Sudan, yeah? In daily life, we wear like this. This is our clothes. Uh, also, this is Sudanese currency. You see it here? It's called Junei, it Junei, or pound. The Sudanese currency is pound or Junei. You can say Junei. One of the most, the second picture here in the right, this is showing that one of the greatest and also the rare culture that you cannot find in the world. It just exists in Sudan. It's called it Ramadan habit, Ramadan in Sudan. In Ramadan in Sudan, all the people will go outside and opening the fasting in, in the street. You know, in the street, they sit, they sit, they sit there behind the street and also close to the street and then everyone that want to close this street in maghrib time they will stop him so you, they will force you to open your fasting there to eat with them this is only exist in sudan no one in sudan in ramadan eating inside his house we eat outside all together so you can see also there's some there's some indonesian uh, journalists already write about this in ditik.com you can see it also this is we call it ramadan in sudan it's unique unique yeah this this is uh, what we call it ramadan in sudan uh, one of my experiences in indonesia when i come for first time and i was learning bahasa you know i was i was staying in kos Kosan, yeah, you call it Kosan, yeah, boarding house, yeah. And then my, I, I was looking for the chair, for the chair, and then I come to the Ibu Kos, I say to her, Ibu, I want to say, Ibu, I'm looking for my chair in Bahasa, because in Bahasa you say Chari, yeah, Chari, Chari is... Mencari. Chari, yeah. Yeah, but I, I didn't really, I did a big mistake at that time, I said, Bu, Saya mau mencuri kursi. <laughs> and then she, she looked to me like this. <laughs> saya mau mencuri kursi. I was just want to say, I, saya mau mencari. But I said mencuri. It has different meaning, yeah? So I was really... <laughs> There's actually many, many experiences in Indonesia. One day also in, in Angkot, in, in the transportation, I asked one man, what do you know about? He asked me, where are you from? I said, I'm from Sudan. He said, oh, Sudan. Like he knows Sudan. I asked him, you know Sudan? He said, yeah, yeah, it's in America, yeah? I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said <laughs> so most of Indonesian people, they doesn't know about Sudan, actually. Mm. And sometimes some Indonesian also, they think that Africa is one country. They think that Africa is one country. But actually, Africa has more than 54 countries, yeah? More than 54 countries. This is big continent, yeah? <clears throat> and uh, there's many actually experiences, maybe I give uh, in Indonesia, but 
because of time, maybe so I give you opportunity because we want to share. Actually, I want you to talk to us more so I can answer and then we share again, yeah, together. Thank you so much. I hope this interested for you, yeah. Okay, <laughs> perfect sekali ya for the presentation I think ya. So we left together and about your story Indonesia while doing learning bahasa Indonesia is really interesting for the student ya. Tadi luar biasa ya diceritakan dari uh, my friend Bakari and my friend Husain ceritakan luar biasa sekali pengalamannya tentang makanan, tentang bahasa, tentang budaya di Indonesia. Bagaimana perbedaan budaya luar biasa sekali tadi ya. Sehingga harapannya ini membuka apa namanya wawasan kita uh, terkait uh, bagaimana ternyata memahami budaya asing budaya orang lain itu ternyata tidak segampang yang kita pikirkan ternyata harus memang kita harus memahami dengan betul begitu ya luar biasa sekali so this is the time to practice I think so after you know well about the things from the Gambia from the Sudan I think yeah uh, maybe for the first time you think that the little thing about the Sudan and little thing about the Gambia and right away you have uh, brought in your mind about the both Both countries. Okay, this time to practice. Please unmute yourself and then uh, video on and please uh, give them question about anything. Silahkan. You, you may uh, chit chat, you may uh, make a conversation uh, to ask about anything. Silahkan siapa? Nadifa, jawab dulu. Nadifa dulu. Hi, ya boleh, silakan. You may ask anything to Bakari or to Mr. Hussein. Which one you wanna choose or both of them? Silakan, mm -hmm. boleh. Both of you. Okay. Uh, my name is Nadifa Zara. Uh, I wanna ask both of you. How long have you been in Indonesia or in Yogyakarta? Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Nadifa, for the question, thank you so much. Guys, all of you, we are wishing that you can ask direct question, not writing question, yeah? Don't type it there. So ask us directly, yeah? We're wishing that. For me, I, I come to Indonesia to Yogyakarta 2019, September. So it's almost one year and a half, yeah? Here in Indonesia, in Yogyakarta, I mean. Um, and, for me, okay. and for me, I came to Indonesia in 2019, October 38. And then I reached, I moved to Jakarta here in October, uh, December 2020. October 2020, I come to Jakarta here. So I think I have almost like three or four months here. And then all together in Indonesia, I have one year in Indonesia here. Oke, okay, thank you very much. So, any other question? Lanjut. Siapa saja langsung saja ya, directly, langsung. Silahkan unmute yourself and asking them. Langsung, yuk. Be brave, harus berani. Guys, you, you have to be brave. You have to learn from my experiences. I was, I cannot make differentiate between mencuri, mencari. But I start to learn bahasa. So, Don't feel that when you did a mistake, it's like something shame. Just you try to talk, speak. This is very important. You cannot learn any language without practice. You have to practice. Okay. Have to be brave. Talk. Ayo, talk, talk. Have to be brave. Walaupun salah, yeah. don't afraid of making mistake. Jangan takut untuk salah. Tadi Mr. Hussein juga salah mencuri dan mencari. Ya tidak masalah. Ya ini dari kesalahan itu, from the failure for the mistake, we can get the new step to be success. That's kan gitu? true. Yeah. We can learn from our mistakes. Yeah, yeah let's yes. go. Yeah. Ayo, go on. Siapa? The next one. Ayo, or langsung. We, or we have to mention the names. Maybe, yeah, okay, mention the name, okay. Mention the name, yeah, it's important. <laughs> okay, silahkan ayo, uh, mention the name, okay, mention the name, maybe Mbak Zahwa, silahkan Mbak Zahwa. I think Mbak Zahwa already 
prepared for the question? Uh, um, okay, my name is Zahwa Dila Dayana. You can call me Zahwa. I want to ask you a question. Why did you choose Indonesia to uh, study? Why? Okay, thank you, Mbak Jahwa. Please. One question that's why we why we did choose Indonesia as the destination for our study. Yeah? Study, that's right. Yes, okay. For me, uh, before I come to Indonesia, actually I have uh, received a scholarship to study in Turkey, in Turkey, and then I, I have received two scholarships actually, one to Indonesia and one to Turkey. And then I did Salat Istikhara, you know, we, because as our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said that we do mashwara, yeah, mushawara, mashwara with our family, and then we do istikhara. I did istikhara and mashwara, and then my process go faster in Indonesia, and then I come to Indonesia. So Allah choose Indonesia for me as a destination for study. Yeah. Okay, okay. Wow. Yeah, um, for what? me, I think... Um, why I choose Indonesia to study here is um, the, 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 the kind of education and then the, the state of peace in which the country has. Like this country is a very peaceful country and then it have a um, majority of the population is Muslim. And then we know that Muslims are good people and then they welcome us with open arms. Although I had a scholarship too to study in India before I came here, but when I do my evaluation, I evaluate between Indonesia and then India, then I choose Indonesia. Because some of my friends were studying in, in um, India and then they were telling me it is very hard there. It is so hard to live there as a Muslim and to study there. So it is a challenge for them there. So I look at it and then as far as I am a Muslim, and then in Gambia, we have a majority of the Gambia is Muslim. We have like 95% of Gambian are Muslim. And then I also cross check Indonesia also have almost 95 to 96% of the population being Muslim. And then we know Muslims are good people. They welcome us with open arms. And then that's why I also decided to choose to study in Indonesia because of peace, because of Islam, because of religion. Okay, thank you very much. If Jawa asked me that if you get an opportunity to choose country for your destination now, so my answer will be Indonesia after I experience <laughs> Indonesia. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Good, good, good. Okay. Any more question? Lanjut, ada lagi. Okay, Mbak Admira. Admira, okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Mbak Admira. Uh my name is Abdullah Fizikonita. I come from Banyuwangi, Java. Um, I, I, I want to ask you, besides living in Jakarta, don't you want to go to anyone else? Because Indonesia has many beautiful places. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Question. Thank you very much, Ba Amira. Okay, Admira. thank you so much, Amira or Admira. I don't Amira. know which one is right. Uh, if, you invite, if you invite us now to Banyuwangi, we will come there, yeah? Without, without rapid test, yeah, without rapid test. <laughs> Actually, you know, since we come here and there's corona, so we, we couldn't go many places. We're still in Georgia, but we are we have a plan. After after all the citizens receive the vaccine, maybe we will go around Indonesia. We go to Lombok, can we go, we can go to Bali and many places actually in Java also. We we have we I already have a plan for that actually for me, yeah. But Amira, Admira, I want to ask you a question also. What the thing that unique in Banyuwangi? What the thing that is unique there? Banyuwangi have um, Banyuwangi have mountain. The name is Ijen Mountain. This one, um, what the most beautiful mountain in the world. Wow. Banyuwangi have. Wow, wow. nice. And nice. Banyuwangi have many beach. Emma and many beach, beach, beach. No beach. Okay. Yeah, many okay. fish in Banyuwangi, and, and the okay. the food's very delicious. It's the word it to you try that. Okay. You are you are a good promoter. You have to study marketing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then second question from me to Admira. Um, 
which provinces, if it is a province, which provinces is uh, Banyuwangi is and which side of Indonesia can we find? Because for me, I don't know actually where Banyuwangi is located. So I would also want to know where the location of Banyuwangi, uh, which province or which Banyuwangi city. is neighbor of Bali. Banyuwangi is neighbor of Bali. Neighbor, oh. Bali neighbor. And uh, east of Java. Okay, for uh, Bakari, the, the, the city or the place that you want to visit besides Yogyakarta, what is that? Um, actually, if you ask me right now, the city that I want to visit, and I have a lot of history about that city, um, is going to be Bali. Because when I came here, everybody talks about Bali. So I have never seen Bali. I have never been to Bali. So when I ask some people, they will say, have you been to Bali? Um, I will tell no, I have never been to Bali. The only place that I have visited when I was in East Java is um, Batu, so which is a, a tourist destination also. We have like most of the tourists also visit Batu. But right now, if you ask me which city actually that I want to visit before I go back to Gambia, I will ask, uh, my answer might be Bali. So Bali is one of the cities that I want to visit. As okay. Well. And then after Bali and Banyuwangi, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, before we continue the question, I think I want to share one um, PowerPoint, and then you think this is a fact or not? I uh, just want to say, uh, share a little bit more about the, uh, the 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 places. I think so. In okay. So tell me a little bit more about these places. I think in uh, several. Sentences, maybe one or even two sentences. What about this? Uh, maybe for the first time, is a student, uh, Mr. Hussein. You can tell us a little bit more about this place. You know this place. This, this, this is one of the greatest mosques in Khartoum in Sudan. It's called Al Masjid Al Kabir or Al Masjid Al Atiq. This masjid is actually built during the, sit, the, the, the period of uh, colonialism, which is British, British colonialized. colonialized. And, uh, and also during the Turkey, actually, Turkish. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The biggest, the biggest yeah. or not? This is not the biggest one, but the greatest one. Okay. The greatest one. Yeah, the first masjid there. Okay, what about the Gambia? The Gambia? Yeah, King Fahad, King Fahad Mosque is one of the biggest mosques in Gambia. And then in history, it's one of the longest outstanding uh, mosques in Gambia. It is one of the biggest. Okay. If you enter in this mosque, it's so big. And then it is not only known for prayers, it is also known, the other part of the mosque is also known for learning um, Arabic, to teach Arabic to students. So okay. Basically, it is more of a mosque and, and also a, a learning place. Okay, good. And it is what located in the capital city of Gambia, which is called Banyu. Oh, Banyu. Okay, that's right. What about this next one? A little, little bit more about the explanation. You, you think know about this place? Yeah, yeah. this is we call it Guba, you know, Guba. Guba. <clears throat> yeah, in, in Sudan, actually, in 19, 1921, we had an... Uh, no, I mean in 18, 1821, we had an revolution, Islamic revolution, which is come from Muhammad Ahmad Mahadi. Mm. He was fighting the the British colonialism, colonialized, and also after that, after he win, he was uh, make an state which is called Al Mahadi State in Sudan. It's his Islamic state, and then after he died. This is his uh, grave, actually, in Khartoum, in Sudan. So that's his body has been graved here. This is uh, the Mahdi, where he has been uh, died, and also where his, his oh, grave yeah. exists here in Sudan. So why we call it uh, Gubba. So many people visiting this place, mm -hmm. such like become like historical places to visit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What about this? Wusu Stone Circle, the Gambia. Yeah, um, this is called Wasu Stone Circle in Gambia. It is located in the southern part of the Gambia and in, in some provinces um, around a village called um, Chese. This is a traditional place 
And then for the fact that most tourists, when they visit Gambia, most Europeans, when they visit Gambia, one of the places that they usually visit is this stone circle. We know that these stone circles have been into existence since maybe you can say three or 500 years ago. So it's not a stone circle that has been there for maybe like 20 years now. It's been there for almost 500 years plus. So it is one of the longest traditional um, place for people to visit. And in this place, a lot of things happen, like second season, and then like uh, most of the traditional um, act of worship takes place in this area during previous generation, not our generation. Yeah, yeah. We learned that history. So it is one of the traditional places, and then of course, a tourist attraction center for them. That's a natural phenomenon or just a human made? No, this is natural phenomenon. It is oh. not human being. It's, mm. it's found like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Think. Oh, this one, I think, the last one. <laughs> the last one, this one. Yeah, this, this is... is uh... <clears throat> this is Sudanese pyramids. And actually, in Sudan, most of the people doesn't know that Sudan has pyramids. Behind, in Sudan, we have... <laughs> in Sudan, we have more than 200 pyramids. And also... Before, as you know, that in the history, Sudan and Egypt has one kingdom, which is called Kush. So at that time, why that there is common between Egypt and Sudan? This this pyramid is exists in the north part of Sudan, and it's around two hundred pyramids. 200 in pyramids. Egypt, maybe they have less around for ten years, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. What about this? Uh, the Gambia. This is called the Kachikali Crocodile Pool. I really want to share a very short story about this area. Um, this is a traditional place, and then it is also a place where people go and then seek prayers. Um, in previous generations, we learned that this is a place where you have crocodiles. But these crocodiles are not always visible, meaning you cannot see them at all times. Mm. There is a specific time of the year which you can see the crocodiles. And then one of the reasons why people visit these crocodiles is um, when a woman is barren, meaning a woman cannot give birth to a child, have a difficulty in having a child, because we know this is something that is also common in our society. Some people find it difficult to have child. So what they do is they used to go to this place to see these crocodiles, and then if you are lucky, according to the generation, because this doesn't happen in our time. So when you meet this crocodile, and then you pray, you pray, and then um, according to them, your prayers get accepted, and then for the fact that you will be able to have a child. That is the history. So <laughs> this is the reason why um, still these crocodiles are into existence, but during, uh, with the coming of Islam, it undermines all this traditional act of worship in the place. But still now, these crocodiles are in Gambia, and it is very difficult to see. But with the coming of Islam, with our belief in Islam, now these traditional places of worship have been neglected. But actually, before, it is the traditional place for worship. Yep, yep. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Uh, this is just the fact, I think. Uh, the Sudan translates the land of the blacks. You think so about the the fact? Yeah. Uh, before you know, before uh, in Sudan, if you see the Sudanese people, they are mixed. Actually, Sudan is in Africa. Yeah, look at it in Africa. Mm. <clears throat> and at that time, for the first time, all the kingdom that exists in Sudan, it was African kingdom. Yeah. And yeah. also the people who stay in Sudan, the first people who stay in Sudan, they are black. So that so. Done in Arabic Sudan, it's the yeah, the land of blacks. Mm -hmm. But after what's happened in Arabic in Arabian region, especially in the Middle East, some of the tribes shift or immigrant from Yemen to Sudan because and also some traders enter Sudan because they want to spread the Islam to Africa. Because Sudan is the gate of Africa, it's the first country when you go from the Middle East, you can pass it. So uh, some of that marriage with the African women, and after that, we see that in Sudan, some people, they are not too black and they are not too white. 
So they are mixed because their grandmother is African and their grandfather is Arab Arabian. So they are mixed here. Yeah. yeah, okay. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, number two, uh, there is uh, more than uh, 200 pyramid. Before and then that's right, you have already talked about it, yeah? And then the Sunni tradition. You think the Sudan is Sunni, yeah? Mostly? Sudan is Sunni, yeah. It's the majority of people are Sunni, yeah. mm, Okay, Sunni, like in Indonesia. Uh, mm. Capital city is Khartoum, yeah? Khartoum, yeah. Uh, Kar how, do, how do you say? Kart Kartamur. In Arabic, we say Khartoum, Al Khartoum. Khartoum, Khartoum. Yeah, oh, okay. Oh. In English, we say Khartoum, Khartoum. Okay, yeah. Okay, and uh, January 1st is a national holiday in Sudan. Yeah, Independent Day. Yeah. This is ah, Independent Day. Because the mostly uh, the country, other country, there's the New Year's. And then Sudan yes. celebrate the independence from Egypt and UK. That's right, yeah. That's right. Okay, good. Okay, that's talking about the Sudan. What about the Gambia? You think it is a fact or just hoax, Bakari? Gambia is predominantly a Muslim country. Yeah, ninety-five percent of the population. Yeah, the Gambia is home to nine different tribes. Yeah, that is yeah. true. We yeah, have there is a close family. to nine hundred species of bird to look out for. Yeah, oh. that's right. Yeah, during election, Gambia fought using marble. This is a unique one. You think so? Yeah, we vote using marbles, and then I even take part in one of the elections. <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay. happened till now, till now. Um, yeah, it happens still now because it is easy to count, and then um, the voting is also done in a unique way. So it's, it is still happening there. Mm, yeah. Jadi yang berbeda dengan Indonesia ini salah satunya ya uh, memilih pemilihannya dengan marble memasukkannya. So, my question is so how did Indonesian vote? Is it through uh, what what mechanism did they use in voting? Uh, using I, paper, using paper. Papers. There is a oh. pictures of the of the elector and then we just vote using a piece of paper. And then there is a secret crocodile that you were talking a little bit more than that that we talk. And yeah. then the last is the Gambia one set at the center of the slave trade. Do you think so? Yeah, Gambia was a center of slave trade for the fact that most of the um, slaves have been taken to Gambia before they are finally exported to other parts of the world. Okay. This is slave trade center. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much again. The last is the closing remarks. I think, please, uh, Mr. Bakari and Mr. Hussein, uh, for your closing remarks, just uh, give the student motivation about the language they have to learn uh, English, what the importance of English, and then what should they do for future. For closing remarks in one minute, please go ahead. Okay, um, for me, what I will urge the students to do is we have to avoid the culture of silence. To speak English, you don't have to feel shy. Um, this English language is one of the most dominant language in the world spoken. So it, it's not like if you speak English language, you have an advantage. Anywhere you find yourself to study, maybe in Europe, in other parts of the world, uh, when they use English language in class, you will be able to understand. So you do not have to feel shy. Of course, for us, when we came here as an international student, we feel shy to speak Bahasa, but that has affected our ability to speak Bahasa. Um, frequently. So <coughs> we find it difficult to speak, but, but as at now, if you break the culture of silence, you break the culture of fear and silence, you'll be able to speak uh, English language. I know most of you have the ability, the, the accent is there, you have a good accent, you have a good uh, memory. So why not take that opportunity to at least speak English? If you see somebody who can speak English, don't feel shy to at least ask some question in English or to speak or to ask that person in English. It is all, it is going to um, enhance your ability to speak English fluently. So if you made a mistake, although we all have, we are human beings, we are not perfect, we made mistakes. So when we made mistake, somebody is there to correct us. So if you speak English, you made mistake, don't give up. Just keep up the spirit of speaking English. So I want to urge every student to take the ability to take the chance to speak English 
wherever you find yourself. So that is my uh, remark. And then semangat to all of you and then keep spirit, yeah? Keep spirit. Thank you very much, Mr. Fakari. Okay, next Thank one is Mr. Hussein, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think Mr. Fakari give you a uh, nice motivation, guys, so you, ha- you don't feel shy, please. Based on our experiences, as I said, that for me as a person who come to Indonesia cannot make a difference between Manchuria and Manchuria. Based on that, and every time I practice <coughs> Indonesian language, every time I improve myself. Because, you know, when you did a mistake in the street or the, in any places, when you come and sleeping, you will remember that. What was your mistake today? And then in the second time, directly automatically you will be improved you will not fail maybe you can fail in again in the same mistake but by times you will learn which one is right which one is wrong and the key you know the key of communication is language and the key to learn language is practice without practice you cannot learn language try to talk english with your mom every time in the house, you can practice English with your mom. Try to, to, to encourage your parents also to talk English with you. Mom, I want water. Mom, I want to eat. Mom, let us go and take a lunch. So in the first time, maybe your mom will be confused like this. She will look to you like this. <laughs> but the second time, she will enjoy also the thing. So you have to practice. And lastly, I can say that the limit of your language is the limit of your world. So to achieve far that you want to be open to the world, you have to learn the language that you are looking for. Because most of the students that I met, they say that Arabic is difficult language. But as you know that English is not difficult and also Arabic is not difficult, it's all based on the experiences and also based on the practice. If you practice, 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 you will talk. And the best way also to practice language is talking, not writing, not reading, not listening. Listening is one of the key actually. But the most important you talk because as I know here, and I am sure that I believe 100%, if now I give you quiz to write writing quiz, all of you will get 100 or maybe 90. Most of you here are good in writing, I'm sure, and maybe good in reading. But you feel shy to talk. You have many vocabularies, I know. You have many words in your mind, but you don't want to express it. Please express it. Talk. This is very important. Talk. Talk. Even, you know, you can record video every time. In your house, you record yourself. You are talking in English and then you listen again to this video. So you will know that what is your mistake and how to improve yourself. What is your weakness? Record yourself by video. Record video by phone in your phone in, in your daily life. You make an also a speech and then you deliver it without text directly. You record it and then you listen it again. Yeah. This is also one of the way to learn language. Yeah. And also, yeah, motivate yourself and also feel a spirit, as our brother said. You will learn English, and I'm sure you one day you will be a great, great student. Also, also you will be a great person in your country, yeah, in Indonesia, inshallah. Thank you so much. I mean, thank you so much for the speaker, uh, Mr. Bakari and Mr. Hussein for this kind of uh, motivational and inspirational uh, quote for today. The best way of practice is speaking. That's good things. Don't be shy and have to practice more. I think that's good thing. Yeah. Okay, for the last, silakan di-onkan semuanya. Please uh, make your video on and then we want to take a picture together. Yeah. Okay, semuanya. Before we close, I think we can open your camera open your video on and then we want to take a picture together yeah okay i, ca- I count till three please open your uh video on okay one two 
three. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, that's good things, ya. Yeah. Okay, yang kedua lagi. One, two, ini layar kedua. One, two, three. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for this section. Thank you very much for this time, this occasion for the student. I hope that uh, the student will get the new knowledge, broaden your mind and open your mind or anything so you can be a good in language. Thank you very much again, Mr. Hussein and Mr. Bakari. I hope that it will be useful and beneficial for a uh, student. Thank you very much. Let's close our meeting by saying Alhamdulillah together. Alhamdulillah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Mr. Hussein and Bakari. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.